Southside Church of Christ here in Orlando, Florida. I'm Wesley T. Leonard, senior minister of this great congregation of God's people. We're so glad, happy, elated, thankful you've carved time once again out of your busy, arduous schedule to be a participant in this prostanao or this worship of this high and holy God we serve. Let's open as we always open, beloved, with our opening mantra, our opening salvo. One, two, three. When you talk with God, no breath is lost. When you walk with God, no strength is lost. When you wait for God, no time is lost. And when you trust in God, you will never be lost. One more time, just for prosperity's sake. When you talk with God, no breath is lost. When you walk with God, no strength is lost. When you wait for God, no time is lost. And when you trust in God, you will never, ever be lost. Beloved, friendly reminder, every Sunday morning, 11 a.m., every Wednesday night, 7 p.m., you can watch us. You can worship with us. You can study with us. You can fellowship with us on our Southside Facebook, Southside YouTube channel, Southside website, sscoc.org, or the Southside app. Also, friendly reminder, beloved, that today, after we finish our worship service at 12.30 p.m., that we will have our monthly, first Sunday of the month, monthly prayer call. The information should be on your screen. You just dial that number and it will tap you in to the Southside prayer call. Now, I am conscious and aware, keenly aware, that an hour west of here later on today is Super Bowl 55, a titanic, colossal struggle between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
And I know you're excited, exhilarated, and have the team of your choice. But I tell you who I'm for. I'm for Jesus. That's who I'm. He's always going to win. So enjoy yourself. Be safe. Quarantine. Don't get happy we're not out of the quarantine yet. Don't throw no big Super Bowl party with a lot of people you don't know. Uh, so you can have wings and chicken and chips. Uh, but be safe, beloved, even in the midst of this fellowship today. Courtney and Carrie James, happy anniversary in February. Clarence and Adrena Wilson, happy anniversary in February. Tim and Doreen Buchanan also have a wedding as anniversary in the month of February. Birthdays from the first to the middle of the month. Jonathan Kane, sweets, happy birthday. Kenzia. Bell Lazar, happy birthday. Courtney Fiacha, Travis Gabriel, Morgan Lee, Amaya Childress, Brittany Henry, all these have February birthdays. Dana Cromedy, happy birthday. John Davis, Eleanor Waite has a birthday. Sonia McKenzie, Angelique Reynolds, Michelle Tonso, Amari Harris, and Makaya James, all of these. February birthdays from the first to the middle of the month. Beloved, if you would be so beneficently kind, allow me to launch into my sermonic uh, diatribe today. And it's based on the gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. And we'll read beginning at verse number 17 and read a few subsequent verses. That's Luke chapter 15. Very familiar passage of scripture, and we'll read a few subsequent verses, Luke 15 and 17. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I sit here perishing from hunger. He declared, I will arise and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found, and they begin to be merry. You know what I want to share with you today, Southside and beyond? A bad mistake does not have to be fatal. A bad mistake does not have to be fatal. We read today from the poignant pen of the great physician, the great uh, disciple, the great learner, student, follower, uh, pupil of Jesus by the name of Luke. We find in our text today, the Lord is in the midst, the throes of his powerful, palliative, parabolic teaching that he rendered in the first century. He opens Luke 15 by dealing with a man who had one lost sheep. He had 99 total, but he lost one. He left the 99 that he may seek that one lost sheep. That segued the Lord into a parable of a lost coin. There's a woman who had 10 pieces of silver in a house. She lost one of the coins, and the Bible says she swept the house. She searched the house till she found that one lost coin. Then finally, in this trifecta of parables in Luke 15, he dealt with a lost son. How a man had two sons, 
One was lost outside the house, and the other brother was lost in the house. But the young boy left home, and the parable taught in this profound way how permanent, powerful uh, the prodigal is to the parishioner in our education and in our relationship to Jesus. This young son who left home is an illustration of Christians in the Lord's church. This parable deals with the human heart. This parable deals with the human existence. This parable deals with life when you descend away from God. This parable also lets us know hope still exists even though we go far from the Father. This parable teaches us a profound lesson on how to wait and watch on God. The parable teaches that, that sin will deceive us. The parable teaches how sin is so expensive in the life of the believer. Oh yeah, beloved, if you, if you are honest in the assessment of your life, if I'm honest in the assessment of my life, we all have made, like this boy, we all have made some bad decisions and some bad mistakes. But we learn and remind it from this text that a bad mistake does not have to be fatal. Yeah, let's admit and be honest today that we've messed up in our lives. Many of us have had that check engine light on for a long time. It's warning us something is wrong with the car, but we keep driving it anyway. You see the light, so the light is saying, I'm functional now, but if you keep driving me, something bad is gonna happen. We ignore the warning signs from God. We ought to admit it and say, Lord, it's me that made bad decisions. It's my bad attitude. It's my bad actions. It's my bad habits. It's my bad errors. My focus was off. My thoughts, my failures, my futility, my shortcomings got me where I was. I married him. I'm the one married her. I messed up my credit. I messed up my money. I messed up my children. I, I eat too much. I exercise too little. I weigh too much. I lie in too many occasions. Lord, I made some bad mistakes. But the good news today from heaven is a bad mistake does not have to be fatal. This young man is a symbol for church members. If you read Luke in the 15th chapter in its entirety, the Bible says he went to a far country. He left home. You, you know how children are when they're home. I'm tired of watching these dishes. Tired of cleaning up my room. I'm tired of these rules and regulations. He wanted to leave home, and you have to be careful, young people. Listen to Brother Leonard. You have to be careful, young people. Today, you sit at home, but there will come a time when you get homesick. <laughs> Preach, Brother Leonard. Oh, yeah, you young. You sick at home, but there will come a time when you'll be homesick. Well, this young man said, I'm going to a far country. And the far country is not speaking geographically. Is speaking uh, spiritually. You see, far country in our lives does not have to be a geographical location. Far country is a state of mind. You don't have to fly to Europe to be in a far country. You don't have to fly to Africa to be in a far country. You don't have to go to Asia, South America, Antarctica, or Australia, any of the seven continents to be in a far country. You can be sitting on the second row and the second pew every Sunday and still have a state of mind that's in a far country. I have to confess to you today in a moment of personal transparency. Transparency. I have been in the far country. It ain't nowhere for a Christian to be. Beloved, it's time to get right 
and come home. You see, right, listen to me, young people. I, I wish you'd just learn from those of us who lived a while. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. And you all never get comfortable doing wrong and feeling like it's right. I believe I said something. Don't ever get comfortable doing wrong and feeling like it's right. I came by the chain today, beloved. This boy was lost. And he had to come to himself. This boy made a, a bad mistake. He made a bad decision. But thank God it was not fatal. I came by to tell you today, beloved, he went to his father. He demanded his inheritance. Uh, it's always amazing to me. It's a book I'm reading that kind of illustrates this. He was a consumer, but not a producer. It's always amazing to me how the consumers always making more demands on those who produce. Let me put it in spiritual terms. They are givers and they're takers. The takers always demanding more of the givers and consumers always demand more of producers. He is making demands of his father for something he never worked for, nothing he ever uh, didn't merit or deserve. I want my inheritance and they always say, I want it now. In Jewish antiquities, in Jewish law, when the father died, it's when the sons or the children receive their inheritance. But when he goes to the father while he's yet alive, he's really saying to his father, see, I wish you were dead. You're holding me up, old man. I'm ready to party hearty. I'm ready to sing the roof. The roof, the roof is on fire. I'm ready to go to the streets. I'm ready to have a big time. I'm ready to get my groove on. I'm ready to get toe up from the floor up and beat up from the feet up. Father, give me what's coming to me. I'm tired of your rules. I'm tired of your regulations. I want to be my own man in my own place. I'm tired of you fencing me in. I learned something from this, this text in the Bible. The father never argued with him. The father didn't sit down, but let me and your mother explain to you, boy, uh, that you need, you're going to need the Lord. You're gonna, listen, you better learn in life the power of goodbye. Uh, this is something I've been sharing with y'all for years, and it's hard for a lot of people to grasp it. It's even hard for me, but there's power in that word, goodbye. Some things you ought to let go that you're holding on to. You let go and let God handle that for you. You see, sometimes we even persuade in our children what's best for them. And, and that's what we ought to raise them up and the way they should go. Proverbs 23. And when they're old, they will not depart. But folks, you keep arguing with that child. Go to college. Get an education. Don't get married or please get married. Quit having to get an education. Don't marry him. Don't marry her. And often in life, if we're honest, most of us, when we take a panoramic view of our life, if we would obey them people who was closest and loved us the most, we wouldn't be in some of the mess we're in now. But you got to learn the power of goodbye. I used to get upset. Oh, it hurt my love. Sanctified feeling when people left the church where I preached. Oh, I thought it was an indictment of me and my preaching and the congregation. But I have learned the power of goodbye. Some people you trying to hold on in your life, bye. Some men you trying to hold on, girl, bye. Some women you crying over, boy, bye. Some jobs you think you got to have, bye. Some city you living in, can't nobody, bye. I came by to tell you today, beloved, there's power in that word goodbye. The son said, I want to go. And the father said, go. He journeys into a far country. I'm doing what we call an expository of the text. And I'm going to send you on your bear, merry little Super Bowl Sunday way. He journeyed to a far country because he wanted distance between him and his father. He could have moved to Altamont Springs. He could have moved to Oviedo. He could have moved to Castleberry. Could have moved to Winter Garden or Winter Park. <laughs> he could have moved to Seminole County, Evolution County. No, he left Orlando. He went way out to San Francisco. He went to a far country. He wanted 
to make sure his father and his mother couldn't pop in on it. See, see, some people keep running from problems, but the news from heaven is today you can't run from yourself. He moves to a far country. He puts a distance between him and God. That's what sin does. Sin separates us from God. And the Bible says he wasted his substance in righteous living. Now, you don't have to go far in school to know. You don't have to graduate college to know that you don't have to be educated to know how to waste. It comes natural. If you got more going out than coming in, eventually you're going to start wasting. And I want to remind you today something I've always said to you. Waste leads to want. If you keep wasting, wasting is followed by want. This boy wasted the property. He wasted it is his inheritance. He wasted his money. This boy wasted his health. He wasted his father's good name. He wasted his influence. He wasted his time, his talent, and his treasure. He wasted his future. He wasted his youth. He wasted worse his faith. He made a bad mistake. But the good news, it was not fatal. See, he spent it all. All that's bad news. But it was not fatal. Because when fam famine came to the land, I'm trying to teach you today. Just hang in there with me. Famine came to the land below. He turns to his friends. Uh, and you know how friends are when you're riding high. When he first got to the far country, he was large and in charge. He was sipping out of his cup, out of his saucer, because his cup doesn't run over. But he spent all he had. Now his friends do like your friends do. I get back with you. Uh, and then the Bible says he joined himself to a citizen of that country. Rather than go home, see, his pride wouldn't let him go home. His arrogance wouldn't let him go home. His narcissism would not let him go home. He latches himself to a citizen of that country. And the citizen said, hey, uh, there's a whole pen down there. I'll pay you to watch my swine. Now, in Jewish antiquities, Jewish boys, they were pristine and sterile. They were kosher. They would have nothing to do with a dirty, smelly hog pen. But he decided, I would rather slop hogs than go home. He made a bad mistake. I'm trying to deal with this, this bad mistake first, but I want to inform you, the story ain't over. That's not the end of the story, but it was not fatal. Then, beloved, his time to get happy. The Bible says one day, sitting in a hog pen, in a far country, broke, busted, and disgusted. Friends have forsaken him. His money is gone. He came to himself. That means he began to reason with himself. Oh yeah, he talked to himself. He began to do some introspection. He began to do some reflection on his life. He had an honest talk with himself. He used to say, people are insane when they talk to themselves. No. No, it's good sense to talk to yourself as long as you don't lie to yourself. As long as you're honest with yourself. Every now and then, you ought to stand in the mirror and come clean with yourself. Have a talk with yourself. We used to sing, we ought to sing it again. Just a little talk with Jesus. And after you finish talking to Jesus, you need to learn how to talk to yourself. This boy began to reason with himself. No one came to talk to him. Uh, the pastor didn't come and talk to him. The elders didn't come and talk to him. Uh, the deacons didn't come to talk to him. Revelation ain't come and sang to him. The Bible said he came to himself. His prayer partner didn't come to talk to him. His mama didn't come and talk to him. His daddy didn't come and talk to him. His friends, his neighbor, his Facebook friends didn't. Then, then send him a, a message. He didn't get a message on Instagram. He didn't get a tweet from the holiest of holies. He came to himself. He remembered where and how he was raised. He remembered and thought, I made a bad mistake. He remembered, though, it does not have to be fatal. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who I'm encouraging. Because, see, all of us have made mistakes. 
Some of us have made worse mistakes than others. Some have made really bad mistakes. But somebody out there listening to me today is far from home. You drifted to a far country, even though you never left the city. In your mental, spiritual, psychological, emotional mind, even financially, you drifted to a far country. Your bad mistake, though, does not have to be fatal. You know what he surmised? This is why you got good sense. He said, there's hired servants at my father's house that have plenty to eat. And I'm out here in a hog pen. He says, man, uh, I'm perishing from hunger, eating hog slop, when the servants and the maids and the butlers at my father's house are eating from a smorgasbord and a buffet. He said, that don't make good sense. He said, I'm sitting here in a hog pen in a far country with no money. I'm sick and I'm lonely. And they got corny and fellowship going on at my father's house. He said, I'm sitting here in rags and they got riches in my father's house. He, he talked to himself. He said, now listen, uh, I'm in a pig pen with mud between my toes. And in my father's house, I can be walking on wood floors and carpet. Preach, Brother Leonard. He said, I, I, I tell you what, self, self, I will arise and go back to my father's house. The Bible said, you read it with me. He began to rehearse his speech before he got home. And, and that's how I know he was talking to himself. He said, when I get there, I'm going to tell my father, Father, I have a sin, and I'm no longer worthy to be called that son. And what I like, when he got home, folks, he, he rehearsed his speech. And when he saw his father, he didn't start telling his father how many other, other church folk he saw out there in the far country. He said, no, I have sinned. He didn't tell his father how many brothers I saw from the church in the strip club. He said, no, I have sinned. He didn't say, father, there's a lot of hypocrites out there. No, he said, I have sinned. He didn't say, father, I was drinking, drinking some crown raw peach and the church folk were there drinking with me. No, he said, I have sinned. He said, Father, I smoked a big old fat blunt. Uh, he didn't say other folk were smoke. I have sinned. He said, folk, Father, he didn't say, Father, other folk are fornicating and adulterating and homosexualizing. He said, I have sinned. He came to the Father. He said, uh, I came weary, wounded, and sad. He, I found in him a resting place, and my father has made me glad. And what I like about the father, he's sitting there one sunset afternoon. He sees a silhouette coming in the shadows of the sun. Father puts his head looking. He recognizes, that's my son. And then the old man forgot about his age. He forgot about his arthritis and his birth sign. He ran to meet his son. He stopped him from speaking. The boy is giving that rehearsed speech. Father, I'm sinned. I've sinned and no longer worthy to be that son. The father smothers him with hugs and kisses. The father, the father, the father says to the servants, bring him a robe on and replace these rags. Bring him shoes and slippers because he's barefooted. Bring him a ring that will restore him to royalty. And then he says, kill the fatted calf. I didn't recognize this until I went to Jerusalem last year. The reason the father said kill the fatted calf and didn't say kill a hog or a pig and have a ham dinner. The reason he said kill the fatted calf because he could have killed a hog that reminded the boy of his past where he just came from. And God does never but never bring up your past and remind you where you were. God wants to celebrate where he wants to take you. They kill the fatted calf. They begin to eat, drink, and be merry. See, once the Father, God, blots out your sins, even though you made bad decisions and made bad mistakes, God wants you to know today it doesn't have to be fatal. The Bible says all you have to do is what this boy did. Notice he confesses his sin to the father. He didn't bring up somebody else's sin. First John chapter one, verse number nine. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. And I came by to tell you today, you might have made a bad mistake. You might have made a bad decision. You might have lived in the far country. You might have built a house there. But if you come to yourself, if you come home to God today, if you stop lying to yourself and just say, I'm going home to the church and my father. Oh yeah, now you got to deal with some ridicule and I'm done. When he got home, just read Luke 15 in his entirety. Oh, the brother made fun of his younger brother. He criticized him, questioned his sincerity, questioned his credentials. He began to surmise how he wasted his money. Isn't it amazing when folk come home to the church, there's some saints who never left, who began to question where you've been, who you've been with, what you've been doing, as if you owe them any account. It's between you and God. If you messed up your life, come home today. The Lord will receive you. If you're out in the far country, you're just going from place to place, just notice your life is no better off. You're worse off. Come home today. Don't wait for a more convenient time. Come home today. Don't wait till you get your life together. Come home today. Don't wait till you feel like the church folk will accept you. Come home today. Don't wait until you think nobody's around when you come back and make your confession. Come home today. The Bible says in Matthew 10, 32, if you confess me before men, I could own you before my Father in heaven. But if you deny me before men, God said, I deny you before my Father in heaven. Come home today. And when you come home, we'll receive you uh, with joy. There'll be rejoicing in your life, rejoicing in your church. And the Bible says there's rejoicing going on in heaven. I want to leave you with this, beloved, and I'm going to stick to my seat. Bad mistakes do not have to be fatal. I've taught the scores of people in my ministry, and one of the things that keeps them from God, keeps them from a symbiotic relationship with Christ. What keeps people from even coming to the church and sometimes staying in the church or when they leave the church? And I ask them, why did you leave? Or why won't you come? The answer is very for me. You heard this. I would be there, but there's just so many hypocrites in the church. I, I would stay there, but there's so many folk who just hypocrites in the church. And I said, why don't you stay and make that one less hypocrite in the church? And I tell them, I'm aware that everybody going to church ain't going to heaven. Matter of fact, Jesus talked about that. There ain't no revelation. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. He said, many will say unto me that day, Lord, have we preached or prophesied in thy name? Lord, in your name we cast out devils and demons, and in your names done many wonderful works. And the Lord said, depart from me, I never knew you, you who work iniquity. There's no mystery and enigma that there's hypocrites in the church. Jesus said you cast out a net and you catch some of what you want, you catch a lot of what you don't want. There's no mystery. Why would you let a hypocrite keep you from God? Yeah. Everybody go to church ain't no Christian. Just like everything that live in the water ain't no fish. <laughs> Preach, Brother Leonard. See, real fish, uh, all fish live in the water, but not everything that lives in the water is a fish. How do you know a fish? If you get a fish out of the water, they fight, they flutter, they fight to get back in the water because fish know they can't live outside the water too long. I'm trying to tell you again, not everybody go to church as a Christian just like everything that lives in the water is not a fish. But the fish you can tell because when you take them out of the water, they fight to the death to get back in the water. I'm trying to tell you, everybody in the church ain't saved. Everybody in the church ain't right. Everybody in the church ain't going to heaven. Everybody going to church ain't sanctified. Everybody going to church don't mean you are I no good. Sometimes in the church we drift to the far country, but that mistake don't have to be fatal. But just like a fish, a Christian outside the church will fight to the death to get back to the place where they know life is. Some 
creatures live in and out of the water. We call that an amphibian. They live in and out of the water. That's what a hypocrite does. But let me leave you with this. Don't ever let a hypocrite come between you and the Lord. If you hide behind the excuse of a hypocrite, if you allow a hypocrite to come between you and God, and you hide behind the hypocrite, I mean, if you can hide behind the hypocrite, you got to be smaller than the hypocrite. <laughs> Preach, Brother Lynn. I wish I had a church in here today. I just feel like making some points. If you allow a hypocrite to come between you and God, listen, this is the last point I want to make. If you allow a hypocrite to come between you and God, then the hypocrite is closer to God than you are. <laughs> you still ain't getting, I wish I had a church in here. If you allow a hypocrite to come between you and God, that means the hypocrite is closer to God than you. God's here, the hypocrite's here, and you further away from God than the hypocrite. If you have cancer today, it won't do you a bit of good to take the name of all the other people that got cancer. I'm trying to make a point here. If you in sin today, it doesn't do you any good to start making notes of all the other people who are sinners. No, what you want to do, beloved, is remember, no one can save you but Jesus. And no one can keep you from being saved but yourself. I leave you with that. No one can save you but Jesus. And no one can keep you from being saved but yourself. A bad mistake does not have to be fatal. Maybe you've drifted. Maybe you've wandered away from home. Maybe just in your mind, in your home, you can leave home and still be at home. Maybe you've dabbled with the far country. Maybe you're habitual in the far country. Maybe you made a series, chronic, Mistakes, bad mistakes, but they do not have to be fatal. Use this young boy as a template. Use him as a schematic design to find your way home. He made a bad mistake. He was disrespectful to his parents. He, he left home, wasted his money. When he got in want, all of his friends thinned out. Have you ever noticed that the people you go and hanging out with, they love you and all that, just wait till you hit hard times, they'll abandon you. He started talking to himself, the Bible said he came to himself. Wherever you are today, wherever you're watching me, what device you're watching me on, maybe you're sitting here alone, you need to talk to yourself. In my father's house, hired servants live better than me. In my father's house, I had health care. In my father's house, I had a soft bed. He's just speaking physically, but I'm talking spiritually with you. In God's house, a bad day in the church is better than a good day in the world. Hypocrites aside, don't let anybody stand between you and God. If they do, they are closer to God than you are. Beloved, he rehearsed his speech. He went home to his father. He confessed his wrong and his sin. But it requires honesty. He says, I have sinned. Didn't put it on nobody. This, I have sinned. No longer worthy. And God will do for us what he did, that father did for his son. He hushed him. I don't want to hear that. Smothered him with hugs and kisses. Get a robe put on his back. Put shoes and sandals on his feet. Put a ring on his finger. Kill the fatted calf. Don't kill no hog. If you kill a hog, that'll remind him of the hog pen he just came from. God never brings up in your face what you've done in your past. And they began to rejoice and be merry. He made a bad mistake. But it was not fatal. Come home today. Reunite with God the Father in a relationship with his son, Jesus. Hear about his son's death, burial, and resurrection. Believe that with all of your heart. Repent of your sins. Confess Jesus as God's son. Join him in baptism. 
that you could be born again and wash away your sins. That would add you. You can't join the church. You have to be added through baptism. You have to be born again. That will add you to the church. And you can live faithful to your die. And even when you make a bad mistake, maybe you had a baby, a baby or two out of wedlock. Maybe you made uh, a, 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 a marriage with a bad person. Bad mistakes, it don't have to be fatal. Maybe you took uh, a bad decision about drugs or alcohol. Maybe you made a bad decision about employment, a bad decision to drop out of school. Maybe a bad decision about leaving the Lord's church. Whatever your bad decision is, secular or spiritual, a bad mistake does not have to be fatal. Come home today, accept Jesus, and God is your father, and watch him work miracles in your life. Shall we pray? God, we're thankful, we're mindful, we're glad, we're happy of your word and his power to save. We're thankful for this first Sunday in February. We pray that you will guide us, lead us, protect us, and forgive us. Bless those who are less fortunate, those who are bereaved, those who are sick, those who have physical maladies, those who are dealing with COVID-19 directly or indirectly. We pray for a swift and effective vaccination that we can develop herd uh, immunity in Orlando and beyond, that we can return to a sense of normalcy in our lives. Lord, please continue to bless our congregation in Southside, even those who've drifted to the far country, and all of us, there have been times in our lives we've drifted to the far country. And Lord, we've all made mistakes. Some have made really bad mistakes. But whether they be big or small, help us all to be reminded through your word and the product of son that a bad mistake does not have to be fatal. Now, Lord, as we prepare to take your body and your blood, cleanse our minds and our hearts that we remember the price you paid on Calvary. And then as we prepare to give our alms, the first fruit of our labor, and our tithes and offerings, Lord, we ask you to receive it in the spirit we give it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, I pray you have a piece of unleavened bread. Please take it and uh, prepare to partake of it. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. This unleavened bread represents his, his uh, body. Fruit of the vine represents his blood. As we remember upon the first day of every week, the horrific price he paid on Calvary for the sins of humanity. Please partake of the bread. Now I've taken a cup. Thank God for Jesus. Beloved, let's get happy. Let's get glad. Let's be thankful through our giving. Friendly reminder, if you want to give, beloved, you see the P.O. box at the bottom of the screen to my left. You can mail in your lay by, your tithes and offerings with certified funds, check and money order, etc. Please do not mail cash. The P.O. box at the bottom of the screen. For those who live out of town, out of the region, and you don't want to give online, every week we receive mail from people who mail in contribution. We thank God for you and your contribution. But if you're not comfortable giving online, drop off your lay by if you don't want to mail it. You can mail it, but if you don't want to do that, come and get your communion supplies. We just replenished our communion supplies. We have communion supplies possibly till the Lord comes back. And we just want you to know, come by and get as many as you want so you don't have to keep making trip after trip. You get as many as you want. And then, we also can drop off your lay by if you so desire and receive mobile prayer. And, but preponderously speaking, most people give via of our three giving online opportunities. You can see it on your screen to my left and your right. Giveify, most popular, safe and secure. Uh, also, the PayPal is safe and secure. And then our second most popular is the Cash App. Both are safe and secure. Remind you, if you desire a, a tax statement from the church about how much you gave last year, you contact Elder Victor Cromedy. He'll email you your tax statement. If you gave online, give or fire a cash out, you know you can generate your own statement because it keeps track of how much you gave to any particular in industry. Remind you, beloved, 1230 today. Uh, in just a little while, we'll be having our monthly prayer call 
And we ask those who are willing and want to join us. The number is at your, on your screen even as we speak. We look forward to hearing from you then. Always remember and never forget, beloved, we all make mistakes. Sometimes we even make bad mistakes. But we're reminded today that a bad mistake does not have to be fatal. God bless you. Have a good day. I am learning to live every day.